Hello all. Alright, on the bench tonight is a GEB model, it's an 18 channel. Very, very nice cosmetically. Um, on first looks it uh, hasn't been touched. Tonight's um, the symptoms or faults that this radio had was it has a lot of squealing coming in through the audio. Um, it's in intermittent, so I was chasing that down, isolated it to the VCO and maybe a few other areas. So tonight's um, uh, challenge was uh, just a simple one to replace the VCO and on this you can see it's a uh, Razor, Ray, um, Razor Radio sorry, um, VCO. I've also, uh, to cut a long story short, replaced the um, O2A chip holder Okay, just here. I also replaced the VCO alignment here. This pot was, slug was damaged, couldn't get it out, had to replace it. Um, what else have I done? Um, first signs were that somebody had been in here was that the larger cap had been replaced. Um, there's quite a few other examples. I've gone through tonight and replaced just some of the other capacitors the old Elcos and replaced them with new ones. All right, um, I also replaced the back tins, which I sanded with 3000 grit sandpaper and uh, coated with a lacquer. That gives it a nice, nice finish. Remounted that back. Now I want to show you um, underneath, this is where all the fun starts. Hang on a minute. All right, so this is the, the green VCO. This one um, has a lot of warping in it and so I thought well somebody's actually tried to fix that when things haven't been in supply that's what you used to do there's damage to it eventually got it out and it's well and truly had a, a lot of playing with to try and fix it all right so we've replaced that now let's have a look what do you see all right, so I want you to focus on this area here. This is the area um, underneath the large capacitor. And I want you to focus on now the O2A chip area. All right. Let's see if I can get Here we go. Now, this is after all my repairs. Now I didn't do the track jumpers, I didn't do any of the cutting or any of this. All I've done is remove the existing work, put a chip holder in, remove the O2A chip which I suspect to be dead and reinstall all these jumpers neatly. Um, I also reflowed a lot of the solder, neatened up a lot of this work. Um, as you go through here, you can see a lot a lot of work. This is the area that um, somebody's had a big attempt at trying to fix. Here's one of the legs to that to the new capacitor, which is a that's the positive lead. This is the negative lead. Now, what happens? So, why is it like this? This isn't just a bad soldering or butchery from somebody. This is what happens when you don't replace these caps and the acid comes through on the underneath of the board generally down the negative line which is here which is again shown me to be exactly what's happened and it just eats all the tracks so somebody has to come in at some point and start cleaning cutting removing and repairing um, this is not one of the best repair jobs but it is effective um, the damage had been so bad that there was probably nothing left. Now if I switch, flip this over, you can see there's the cap there. Surprisingly enough, none of these header pins here were all corroded. And as you can see, the usual suspects down here normally get corroded none of those were corroded so the cap leaked on that side 
um, the glue was all around here which somebody's cleaned up the remnants of and it's all gone through the board all right so now the job is to put it back together and try and stabilize it okay um, I've decided to do what I do with all my GEs is I end up putting in a 2200 uh, UF um, capacitor 25 volts and lay it over then what I do is I get some uh, Gorilla tape cut it into a small uh, rectangle tangular, and I put it on the back of this uh, cap so we cut it to the rough length and that sits not quite nicely on the board okay so that's in I'll just zoom back and so that's what it looks like not a lot you can do underneath there I'm just going to clean it up a tiny bit and then take it from there I'll be back after I've cleaned it up okay so the jobs the area is cleaned um, I also um, took the black lead which is multi-strand I cut it back about three mil redone redid that and the other end will go to the earth on the other side of the board uh, removed a lot of flux from here and as you can see you can physically see in here I uncovered this for your benefit see what the um, acid does it just eats through the track just like the bodywork on a car and um, somebody had drilled another hole on the board to bring the cap through there on the negative side all I've done is use the original holes and see it better here right in the middle of that circle they've drilled a hole through so I've used the existing the, the proper ones right here there and there all right I'm going to put this back together it's not going to work but um, I've systematically gone through and fixed a lot of the obvious problems all right I've pulled the covers off and uh, this is normal what you experience when you pull these apart they're quite filthy I've taken the front of panel and I've got it sitting in a concoction and detergents and degreasers and what I've decided to do is take the original 18 and upgrade with a genuine 40 um, I rebuilt this one resoldered stripped the board repaired it and um, put the switch into it and we'll see how that goes all right I'll show you how easy it is so the first thing that we're going to do is um, uh, remove these two screws obviously we've got the the main cable disconnected and we flip it over we bring this up through we're going to desolder the meter lamp we're going to undo the this one and there's a one over here that we'll undo I'm going to just um, undo this screw from the front panel and this one from this side remove that tilt this forward slightly and it's a five minute exercise okay the three wires are disconnected uh, the positive the earth and the meter light we'll now disconnect the panel remove and install okay the new selectors in uh, solid the ground wire the meter light and the positive one Clean the display, screwed it in, mounted it. You've got to be very careful down here when you put it in. You double check that you don't crimp any of the wires. Very easy to do. 
All right, I'll start putting the screws in on the side and mounting it back. All right, a quick clean, ready to start the reassembly. All right, we've um, got the chassis back together again, all the screws back where they're meant to be. Uh, and as you can see, we've got the 40, All right. As thought, there's going to be nothing because the PLL is dead. So just need to source that and we'll take it from there. So that's the next, the next point, the next stage. All right, thank you for being with us and as you can see we're gradually making this radio better and hopefully get it 100 um, percent another swamp radio that uh, we're bringing back to life thank you hope you enjoyed you can all do it thank you